over 300 million years ago. Way before the age of the dinosaurs, Earth looked like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. Picture this. Dragonflies the size of crows buzzing around, and millipedes stretching as long as your car. Welcome to the Carboniferous period. So, what was up with the super-sized bugs? And how did oxygen levels play a role in turning insects into giants? Let's rewind time and dive into a wild chapter of Earth's history. The Carboniferous Era. This period was a major turning point for the planet. The continents were slowly drifting together, forming what would eventually become the supercontinent Pangaea. Lush, swampy forests spread out for miles, soaking in warm, humid air. A paradise for life to thrive. And it wasn't just the bugs that were going big. The oceans were swarming with ancient marine life, including primitive sharks. On land and in the water, life was exploding with diversity. Even amphibians were leveling up. Some reached lengths of over six feet, the size of a tall adult, now, let's set the scene. Imagine stepping back into that world. The first thing you'd notice, the massive insects. One of the stars of the Carboniferous skies was Meganeura. Think of it like a dragonfly on steroids with a wingspan pushing 75 centimeters. That's about 30 inches. And here's the kicker. It wasn't just big, it was a predator. This guy hunted other insects and even small amphibians. Not exactly something you'd want buzzing near your picnic. Meanwhile, down on the forest floor, things got even weirder. Meet Arthropleura, a colossal millipede-like creature that could grow over eight feet long. That's right, longer than most couches. It crawled through the dense undergrowth, king of the creepy crawlies. So yeah, the Carboniferous was wild. And those giant bugs? You can thank sky-high oxygen levels for that. But just like all good things, their reign came to an end. And we'll get to that story soon. Fortunately, that giant millipede we talked about, Arthropleura, you're safe. It wasn't a meat eater. This massive critter preferred snacking on rotting plants, kind of like nature's own cleanup crew. Other of the most fearsome bugs of the Carboniferous was Pulmonoscorpius, a giant swamp-dwelling scorpion. This armored beast could grow up to 70 centimeters long, that's nearly two and a half feet of pinchers and attitude. And that wasn't all. There were cockroaches bigger than your palm growing up to 10 centimeters long. Even mayflies were flying giants flapping around with wingspans close to 18 inches. So yeah. If you were taking a hike back then, you'd better be watching your step and the skies. But here's the big question. Why were these insects so freakishly large? If you've been imagining yourself walking around during this era, you might have noticed something weird. You feel more alive. Your energy's up, breathing's easy, and even running seems effortless. That's no coincidence. Scientists estimate that during the Carboniferous, oxygen levels in the atmosphere hit a whopping 35%. That's way higher than the 21% we're used to today. Now, here's where it gets cool. Insects breathe differently than mammals. They don't have lungs or blood vessels to move oxygen around. Instead, they rely on a system of tiny air tubes called tracheae that deliver oxygen straight to their cells. So, when there's more oxygen in the air, those tubes can push more of it through their bodies. That supercharged air allowed insects to grow to monster sizes because their bodies could support it. But it might not have been just a luxury. Some scientists think they had to get that big. See, too much oxygen can be toxic. It creates these nasty little molecules called free radicals. They bounce around inside your body, damaging cells and even messing with DNA. Insects may have evolved to grow larger simply to survive. Bigger bodies meant oxygen was absorbed more slowly, reducing the risk of oxygen overload. In other words, they got big not just because they could, but because they had to. And hey, 
Before you get too comfortable in the Carboniferous, heads up. Hanging out here too long could mess you up. All that extra oxygen? It's not just good vibes and deep breaths. Too much of it can actually make you sick. We're talking nausea, trouble breathing, and even issues with your nervous system. So, maybe don't book a long stay. Now, while the insects totally stole the spotlight in this era, they weren't the only major players in town. The Carboniferous was also a game changer for the entire planet. This period is often called the Coal Age, and for good reason. When those massive ancient forests started to decay, they created thick layers of plant material that over time and pressure turned into coal. That's right, some of the coal we still burn for energy today comes straight from this prehistoric age. And if you're munching on fruits and veggies, odds are you're enjoying the legacy of this time. Many of today's plants trace their roots literally back over 300 million years to the first seed-bearing plants that popped up during the Carboniferous. These seeds allowed for a crazy explosion in plant diversity, and that meant way more complex ecosystems. Oh, what's that crawling by? Looks like a tiny dinosaur, right? Nope, not quite. That's one of the first reptiles to ever walk the Earth. These little guys were just getting started, but stick around a few million more years and boom, we'll enter the Mesozoic era, the real age of dinosaurs. And while the land and creatures were transforming, the atmosphere was changing too. At the start of the Carboniferous, Earth was rocking a warm greenhouse-like vibe. Think steamy jungles, thick with swamps, perfect for all that plant and bug action. But as millions of years passed, the climate started to cool down, a lot. The planet slipped into what scientists call an ice house state. Temperatures dropped and massive ice sheets began forming, especially in the Southern Hemisphere. So what triggered this deep freeze? Well, while we've been time traveling, Earth's continents were slowly drifting and clumping together into a massive supercontinent called Pangaea. And when you move land on that scale, it's not just geography that shifts. It messes with ocean currents, jet streams, and global weather patterns in a big way. As the Carboniferous period winds down, things take a serious turn. The once thriving rainforests, they start to collapse. And with them goes a huge chunk of the life they supported. Plants, animals, and especially our giant insects. See? As the forests disappear, so does the oxygen they pumped into the atmosphere. And those sky-high oxygen levels that once supercharged insect growth, they plummet. Without all that extra O2, those oversized bugs just can't cut it anymore. Their bodies were built for an oxygen-rich world, and now that world is gone. Add in a shift to a drier, harsher climate, and you've got a recipe for extinction. Insects didn't vanish altogether, of course, but the giants, they couldn't adapt. Smaller insects, better suited to the new conditions, started taking over. At the same time, the early reptiles were on the rise. These little survivors began carving out their own niche in this changing landscape, pushing insects further out of dominance. With Pangaea now fully formed, the Earth officially entered a new chapter, the Permian period. Although we'll cover this period at another time. Click on the video on your screen to keep enjoying our content. See you in the next video.